Are you struggling with mixing the right skin tone? Are you feeling frustrated because your mixture turns out dirty? Here's the thing. Figure and portrait can be a very tricky subject to paint. However, mixing the right skin tone is not. In this video, I'm going to share with you the way I mix skin tone. And at the end of today's video, you'll probably be surprised how simple it is. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Painting a nice clean skin tone in watercolor is quite easy. And here's why. Watercolor doesn't use white. Unlike oil, acrylic, or even gouache, lighter value in watercolor is dictated by its transparency. So right off the bat, you have one less paint to worry about in your mixture. That being said, there are a few things I want to share with you before we start to talk about the colors that I use. Number one. Keep your mixture simple. The more colors you use in your mixture, the muddier the color will be. Now for me, that's typically not an issue because when I'm painting a scenery painting, I usually prefer more neutral and muted color anyways. However, when it comes to the skin tone, the cleaner, the better. It doesn't matter the skin color of the person. The mixture should always be as clean as possible. So that means you should only be using two to three colors for your skin tones. Even if you are mixing the shadow on the skin, it should still be clean. That brings us to our next point. Number two, keep your mixture transparent. Skin is actually translucent. So if your mixture is too opaque, it loses the light. This is actually an important concept when it comes to the value on the skin tone. So when you are trying to mix a color of skin that's under bright light, you make it more transparent for the light to lit through. And when it comes to the shadow, think of it as lack of light rather than add more darkness. That means you simply make your mixture more opaque. One of the mistakes I often see students make is starting to add too much dark colors like burnt umber or cobalt blue, and that ends up making the skin look dirty. We'll go over that in the demo later. Number three, keep your wash clean. The cleanness I'm talking about here is not the color, but the consistency of your wash. Sometimes the issue is not about the color you use, but the wash you paint. If your wash is dirty with bad edges and too many layers or scrubbing, the skin tone won't look good no matter what color you use. I talked about wet on wet and making clean washes before. If you haven't watched those videos, I encourage you to watch those. I'll put the link down below and at the end. And number four, keep your color relative. If you think about it, the color of your skin is pretty consistent throughout. There might be some areas that's a bit redder, lighter, or darker, but the overall color is the same. Any value and color changes is most likely due to the lighting. So once you figure out the local color of your skin tone, you should use that as a base. From there, you can go lighter and darker, warmer and cooler, but since they are from the same base color, the overall color of your portrait will look more harmonious rather than spotty. Alright, so let's continue the lesson on the paper and see things in action. Before we do that though, if you find this video helpful so far, please like and subscribe that will help this channel out. Okay, I'm going to show you the color I use and the way I mix the skin tone first, and then I will share my process of painting this portrait. Let's get started. So we're going to do drawing with a couple heads. And I'm going to speed this through very, very quickly because they are not the point of this video. It's mostly about mixing skin tone. So I'm not going to go through all the drawing and stuff. Plus these drawings are very, very rough. If I'm going to paint a full portrait, I'm going to spend a lot more time doing drawings. So these drawings are very rough. And I don't really have reference, so I'm just drawing those from my mind. So I'm going to try different skin tone for each of them. And this is the palette that I use for portrait. It's a different palette. The color is more or less the same, but I need to keep the palette clean so I can have clean skin tone every single time I paint. So this is Carmine, cadmium red hue, cadmium orange hue, cadmium yellow medium, 
This is cerulean blue, cobalt turquoid, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, lizard crimson, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and neutral tint. So the skin tone is mostly going to be here where I use red, orange, and yellow as a base. And it's all about balancing these three colors. So let's start with red. If you look at red, it's the color of blood and that's what I want you to think about. Since the skin is translucent, we get to see a little bit of color of blood underneath the skin. That's why the skin is a little bit reddish sometimes, especially when you're exercise or when you're blushing. So we have red as a base and if we add a little bit of orange here, it's going to turn into a base of the skin tone. So I'm trying to mix sort of a Caucasian looking skin. If I add more orange and yellow, I'm going to turn the skin a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to add quite a bit of water. The first wash should be very transparent and light because we are painting the light of the skin. I also use a clean damp brush to pick up some paint so it can have a little bit of the light. But overall it should be very clean and there shouldn't be any hard edges. And now I'm adding a little bit burnt sienna to darken the skin tone a little bit. Now I'm going to paint a little bit of darker skin color here. Keep the skin to the warm side. So still need to add a little bit of the red and we're doing the same thing. But here I'm going to do a little bit of wet on wet. So a little bit of burnt sienna and do some wet on wet so I can get a little bit of value difference here. Even though this skin tone is darker, we still want to keep it relatively light and transparent. Now onto the third head, I'm making the skin tone a little bit more to the yellow side. So adding a little bit of cadmium yellow but try to be careful when you are putting yellow in the skin tone. Too much yellow, the skin doesn't look healthy. Actually start to look like zombie. And you definitely don't want that. So that should be the first wash of the skin tone. And notice none of the skin tone I use more than three colors to mix. And they're mostly pretty wet mixture. So keep those clean and transparent. We can add a little bit more color later and add more value. Now with red, a little bit of orange, and a little bit of burnt sienna, I'm going to mix a slightly opaque and darker tone for the middle head here. Also grab a little bit of cerulean blue just to cool the color down a little bit so it's not red all over the place. From the eye socket, connect shape to the nose. I use a little bit of carmine for the cheek to give it a little bit of blush. And a little bit of wet on wet if you need a little bit more value. But again, keep the color relatively transparent and keep the wash clean. By just adding another layer, we already starting to see some value contrast, some light and dark. Now the dark on the face, like I said, is lack of light. So don't start to add a lot of dark colors and make the face dirty. The darker part of the skin is simply a little bit more opaque, less light going through. I'm painting the side of the hair and I just bring that value into the right eye. It is a very, very rough painting, like a sketch. So while at it, I'm just painting some hair and I'm mixing a slightly thicker paint for the right eye, which is in the shadow. So I want to keep the eye relatively soft and kind of lost in the shadow. So I'm not going to define it that much. And always remember to soften the edges if you need to by using a damp clean brush. Okay, now I'm adding more burnt sienna to darken the color and I'm using that for a darker skin tone on the left. Again, adding some cerulean blue, get a little bit of cool color but overall, we're going to paint the shadow shape of the face on the left. So it is a bit darker. It's a little bit more brown. However, don't start to add a lot of dirty colors. 
is the same concept. We're simply making it less transparent so it will naturally look darker. And here I'm adding some red to the mixture. So I will paint the nose a little bit redder. That will help the nose project. And here the cheekbone, just adding a little bit more form to it. I'll soften some of the edges, but I don't mind keeping hard edges in some of the area, especially area that needs a little bit more suggestion of structure. If it's soft edge all over the place, then the whole face is going to look like a mush. We want a little bit of hard edge to describe the structure of the face. Now onto the head on the right. So same thing, we're simply mixing a little bit darker, more opaque mixture. But this one a little bit more to the orange and the yellow side. So it's all balancing act, like how red and how yellow you want your skin tone to be, how dark and how bright, it's all about balance. Adding more burnt sienna is going to make the skin a little bit darker. Adding more red going to make it a little bit redder. Adding more orange going to make it more orange and yellow. So it's all about balancing your mixture. And since the color is all from the same base, it's always going to look harmonious. So that's why you see me keep going back to the mixture on the palette. I'm just adding different color to shift the balance, but because they are all from the same base skin tone, the color that I end up with is always going to look relative to the base skin tone. Adding some more dark tone to the nostril and the shadow of the nose. And notice that I actually didn't darken my mixture. It's the same value for the eye socket. But because it is a third layer, it's going to look darker on the paper. So we're simply taking out the transparency on the face. So again, think about shadow as lack of light rather than add more darkness. And now is the time I'm finally starting to add some real dark tone for places like corner of the mouth and corner of the eyes. That's the part I'm starting to add more burnt umber and alizarin crimson. And I'm starting to paint the hair. I like to play with the color a little bit more for the hair. So I'm adding some blue. But I'm also going to darken some of the area for the hair. So the face will pop out a little bit more. As soon as you start to add the hair, the portrait just look a lot more complete. And the face feels like it anchors down. Rather than just floating around. I'm softening some of the edge for the hair just so that it transition to the face. Avoid feeling cut out whenever you are painting the face. So try to connect the shadow of the nose to the lip and things like that. So again, mixing darker skin tone here, adding a little bit burnt sienna to the mixture and add maybe a tiny little bit of burnt umber if you feel it's not dark enough. But still, try to keep it as clean as possible without dirty up your mixture. Even though you're painting a darker skinned person, doesn't mean you start to add a lot of dirty color. So same thing, I start to add a little bit of alizarin crimson for some darker area like corner of the mouth and the eye, the pupil. Soften some of the edges to connect the shape together. Add some cerulean blue underneath the chin just to cool the color down a little bit. Also separate the neck and the chin and the jaw. So I'm painting the hair here. I'm thinking to give it a little bit, some sort of like a fro hairstyle, just for fun. So I do like a basic shape and I do a lot of wet onto wet, adding some more colors. Some blue, some red, it doesn't really matter as long as the value is there doesn't really matter. And again, once the hair is in, it starts to look a lot more finished. And because the hair is actually darker, the dark on the face is actually doesn't look that dark anymore. Now onto the face on the right, starting to mix more color. So I'm imagine this is as like an Asian person. So the structure of the face is not as distinct. So the eye socket is not as dark. But still, we need to 
paint the nose out. So we give it a little bit of shadow underneath and a shadow of the lip. So for the lip, I like to use Carmine with a little bit of orange. So it'll be a little bit on the redder side, but it's not going to be too red. At this point, you know the drill. I'm basically using the same colors on top of each other. So whenever I'm painting the next layer, I'm basically using the same color. Maybe I'll add a little bit darker color. Maybe I'll make it a little bit cooler or warmer. But again, it's about the same color. So here I'm painting the hair of this girl, trying to paint around the face. That helps the silhouette of the face tremendously. So that's the basic of the skin tone. Remember to keep it simple and clean. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't use too many colors and keep it transparent. This is watercolor. Transparency is everything. Okay, so this is a special painting. I did it for my wife last year for our anniversary. So this is her pregnant with our third kid. Anyway, start with the drawing. This drawing I need to spend a lot more time to do. So this is not a sketch by any means. I want to make it a nice and finished drawing. And because this is not just the head, it's the head all the way down to her thigh. So there are a lot going on here. Plus there are hands. Hands and face are probably the most difficult things to draw and to paint. So painting like these, I definitely need to spend a lot more time doing the drawing. I am not a natural when it comes to drawing. So you'll see me do quite a bit of erasing. And it's very important that you understand the anatomy of the figure. Now that doesn't mean that you need to make everything super accurate like a medical illustration. However, if you understand how the anatomy works for human figure, then you can deliberately break the rule and make it into your own style. So a good stylized figure drawing and painting is still based on reality, it's still based on the understanding of the human anatomy and proportion, but with artistic choice. So things look more intentional rather than look like a mistake. So I'm speeding up this drawing process quite a bit. In reality, I actually spend quite a bit of time doing this drawing, but I don't want to bore you. So I'm going to speed up quite a bit. Now here I am drawing the hand. Hand is a little bit of pain, but you usually start with your paw and then you draw the finger out. And make sure you indicate the joint. My wife have a very interesting pinky, as you can see. So that wasn't a mistake. Her pinky really does look like that. Pretty much starting to finish up the drawing, making sure everything is looking correctly. A good solid drawing is very, very important, especially for figure and portrait. If you don't have a good solid drawing, you are setting yourself up for failure and you're going to be a lot less confident when you're starting to paint. Because once you start to paint, there's no going back and no erasing. So make sure you have a good solid drawing underneath. Here comes the first wash. Now I'm trying to keep her skin relatively more to the yellow side, a little bit orange. I'm adding some cerulean blue wet on wet just to cool some color off. And I apologize in advance for the color difference of the two camera. I haven't really calibrated the color yet. But it's also interesting because even though the color looks different between the two camera, but it still works whichever camera you're looking at. So that proves the point that colors are relative. So the first wash, I'm painting the skin area. I'm trying to finish it in one go, doing some wet on wet if I need to add a little bit of cool color and so on. But I definitely need to make some nice clean first wash. And now the first wash is dry. I'm starting to mix a little bit darker and warmer color. 
and start to paint some of the shadow area. Now the tricky part for this painting is that she is almost completely backlit. So we got this pretty bright rim light around her while most of her is in the shadow. But that doesn't make her very dark. Actually, she is still in a lot of ambient light. That's why you still see her face very clearly. So again, keep the mixture relatively simple and clean. Again, we're simply taking out the transparency. We're taking out the light rather than try to paint anything dark. That's the key to keep the skin tone clean and translucent. With just some subtle change in value, you can already start to read the form of the face. Okay, now I'm going to mix quite a bit of color because I have a big area to cover. So I am going to paint her arm, her shoulder and her arm. Now I'm leaving out the highlights on the left. As you can see, as soon as I put in the value, the forms start to read, so it's not flat anymore. Now the elbow area has some core shadow up on her upper arm. So I'm going to paint some of that in. And here I decided to connect her hand value to her belly, so I'm pre-wet the area and I start to add the value in because I want the transition to be mostly soft because her belly is pretty round. So I need to pre-wet the area. And here I'm using a clean damp brush and pick up a little bit of the paint here because there's some bounce light on the floor. So underneath her belly, it got a little bit of bounce light underneath, which is what makes the belly looks very round and full. There's a baby inside after all. So here I decided to take a break and I mix a sort of neutral gray color and start to give it a first wash to her clothes, to her bra. Her bra is white, but it is in the shadow. So we need to give it a little bit of the tone. So that's the first wash on her clothes. I'm just gonna leave it be for now. And then I move down to her jean and also give it a first wash, just a flat blue color. And while we're working on other part, the face is dry again. So I'm going to go in and start to add the third wash of the face, adding some more value to the face that makes the form read a lot better. And as you can see, it's actually not that dark. I simply take out a little bit of transparency, take out a little bit of light. So pretty much it go back to the original local tone of the skin. So you don't see me starting to add burnt umber and some of the dark color just to make it darker. You don't have to make it darker, just make it more opaque. That's all you need to do. Only places like pupil and eyebrow where I need to start to add some darker color. Other than that, the skin itself really doesn't need a lot of darkness there. A little bit of red and burnt sienna for the lip. I also paint the corner of the lip and have that extend out as a shadow. Make sure you soften some edges when you are doing things like lip or nose. You don't want it to be like a cutout. You want that to belong to the face. And now I'm starting to make some darker color and I want to do the hair. So for the hair, like I said, I like to play with the color a little bit more. So I add some cerulean blue from Mission Gold because I really like that blue. And I also add alizarin and crimson and other dark colors. The important part is the shape of the hair. So I'm leaving a little bit of light on the left where the hair is facing up. It's receiving some light from the above. And this is a very important part. I slow down and I paint around her face that makes her face pop and just jump off the page. So painting hair is always a very exciting stage. So again, keep the wash clean as much as possible. And I use the tip of the brush and I paint some delicate details, some hair strength. Now I do need the hair to be darker, but I need to wait for it to dry in order to do that cleanly. 
So the face is looking a little bit flat, so I'm adding another layer of value just to make the form pop a little bit more. And be sure to do it cleanly, so make sure it is dry. And I soften the edges where it's needed. So I'm darken the neck area again, the neck and her chest area, which is mostly in the shadow. So I'm painting the contact shadow where the hair touches her shoulder. And as it comes out to the light, it gets a little bit lighter. This transition adds a lot more depth and makes things more dimensional. So I'm going to work on her clothes. We need to add more value so it doesn't look flat. So start from the shoulder strap. We come down, we'll leave some light because there's some wrinkles and fold. And I do some wet on wet where it's needed. So I soften the edge so there's a transition from light to dark. I'm adding some skin color there because there's some bounce light bounce off from her arm to the clothes. That's why we see a little bit of orange there. So wet on to wet, add some soft details for the wrinkle and the fold just to make it more dimensional. This is actually her second maternity painting. I really enjoy this subject. I think being pregnant is a very beautiful stage of a woman. This transformation from inside out is just unbelievable and very, very feminine because only a woman can have that transformation and it's only nine months. So it's actually a very short period of time. And I feel that we don't celebrate this special moment enough. My wife and I, we often look at our kids' past photo when they're babies, when they're very little and things like that. But we rarely look at her maternity photo. But I really want to make this stage special and what better way to make it special than doing a painting. So now this painting is on the wall and it will constantly remind us this beautiful transformation of her life. Anyway, so I just darkened the armpit and I painted some contact shadow so that it looks like the bra is touching her body and we add more depth and dimensionality to her form, her torso. Now I'm adding more dark to her elbow area and to her arm just to give it a full range of value. So from the bright backlight, bright rim light, to the core shadow and to the local skin tone. And now I'm starting to paint her hand. I don't want to do too much to her hand. I want it to be suggestive and as long as it reads as a hand is good. I don't want to take the attention away from her face and her belly. So I'm just giving some emphasis on the joint of her finger, adding some contact shadow from her finger. So it feels like her hand is actually touching her waist and it will bring that value out underneath her belly. So it feels like there's more volume. So that really makes her belly look round and dimensional. Now it's pretty much just finishing up the whole painting. And it's much easier now that we have a reference point. So if you look at the face, look at the arm and the hand, we know how dark things should be. So we mix similar value and color and we're good to go. So the other hand wrap around her belly. Again, emphasize on the tip and the joint and a little bit of the contact shadow. So I feel like the belly needs to be a little bit darker. So I re-wet the surface because again, I want that nice and smooth transition. It's really important you know where you need soft shape and where you need the hard edge, even on the skin and the human figure. 
You don't want everything to be soft again because everything will look like a mush. But you also don't want everything to be hard edge because it's going to look harsh and too busy. So in this case, the belly is definitely a place that you want a lot of soft shape and soft edges. Now we're gonna finish the painting by filling some dark blue on her jean. You want to keep that part loose so it doesn't take away the attention from what's really important. As long as the value is right, you're good to go. So I'm just adding some more colors, some more value changes. So it feels like the thigh is round as well. But again, keep mostly very loose. There's a little bit of stripe going on on the waistband. So I'm loosely indicate those in. Now the hair is dry so I can paint another layer on top. And this time I'm really going to make it dark. So now we paint the dark hair in. I still leave a little bit of the light on the hair. But mostly we're going to paint a lot of the area of the hair darker. So once we paint another layer of the hair, you can see that the portrait just look a lot more complete. And the face start to look lighter too because the hair started to give it some contrast. So by painting some dark, the light feels lighter. So I'm starting to give some areas some darker stark. So some contact shadows, some transitions. Not to make everything dark, just a few areas. So now I feel the core shadow on her upper arm is not dark enough, so I give it another go. And this definitely makes the rim light a lot brighter. And with that, the figure is finished. And clean up some of the pencil lines and it's time to give it a little bit of the background. Now, I don't want to make the background too dark. The background serves the purpose to make the silhouette more clear and to make the light brighter. So now the figure is separated from the background, but we still have that backlight blooming feel to it and here's the finished painting i really like how it turns out and i hope you enjoy this as well so i hope this is helpful for you of course there's a lot more than just mixing the right skin tone when it comes to painting a good portrait but i certainly hope this is helpful for you i have a playlist of portrait painting demo now might be a good time for you to check them out again you might pick up something new from them if you enjoyed this video and find it helpful please like and subscribe any other question leave a comment down below. If you haven't, be sure to check out my website for new paintings and sign up to get my fast track watercolor PDF guide. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next week.